In section 3.8, we'll be focusing on the HL postulate or hypotenuse leg postulate. Let's first talk about some right triangle vocabulary. So if we have the right angle located here, the side opposite the right angle, which is the longest side of the right triangle, is called the hypotenuse, while the two other sides that remain are each legs. The legs come together to form the right angle within the triangle. When are we going to use HL in this class? We're going to be using HL to prove triangles congruent. So just like we had talked about side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, HL is now a fourth option, a fourth way to prove triangles congruent. When does it work? It works specifically if the hypotenuse and a leg in one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts in another triangle. When we're writing HL in proofs, we're just going to write capital H, capital L, as you'll see momentarily. Let's go ahead and fill in some blanks here. So let's add some tick marks to represent HL. So if we have some right triangles and we know their hypotenuses are congruent and one other pair of corresponding legs are congruent, then that means the triangles are congruent by HL. I'll show you a, a similar HL example over here to the right, but just note that sometimes you may have to use side angle side to prove right triangles congruent still, depending on if the right angle is included between the two congruent sides or not. HL cannot be used in any type of triangle. It can only be used in right triangles. Let's take a look at the simple proof to start off with. So we're reading our given information and we're filling in the tick marks in our diagram. At this point, you should recognize those two triangles can be proved congruent using HL. We're not going to use side angle side because the angle is not included between the two congruent sides, but rather the hypotenuses of the right triangles are congruent and one other pair of corresponding legs are congruent. So I'm writing down the first given with our perpendicular segments, and we can say that BAC is a right angle because if two segments are perpendicular, then they form a right angle. And then we can also mention the other perpendicular given information and therefore write our other right angle that we get in the diagram, which is angle DEC. And that is going to be the same reason as two. So you don't have to rewrite that reason. You can write it same as two. Please excuse my handwriting, it is a little cramped on here. So, let's take a look at what we have next. The given information tells us that segment BC is congruent to segment DC, which if we look at the diagram, those are the hypotenuses of the right triangle. And then we're told that segment EC is congruent to segment AC. And if we look at the diagram, those are the legs of the right triangle. So that's enough to say that the two triangles are congruent by HL, since we have their hypotenuses congruent in the right triangles and one other pair of corresponding legs that are congruent. Now we're going to write out four things here in our parentheses, because in order to use HL, we need right triangles. So in steps two and four, we mention the right angles, so we want to include that. And then in steps five and six, we mention the congruent hypotenuses and the congruent legs. Taking a look at the next example, we want to prove those two overlapping triangles congruent. And they give us some information above. So let's go ahead and fill in some tick marks. So using the perpendicular segments, we get right angles as a result there and there. And then they tell us that segments EF and DC are congruent. Okay, those are not full sides of the triangle, but they're parts of the sides of the triangle. And oh, they tell us that BC and AF are congruent, which are the hypotenuses of the right triangles. So we already have the H for HL. And then we have parts of the legs. But if you notice here, we have that segment in the middle ED, which I think we can use addition property, which we'll write out in just a moment to get the full legs congruent. So I just filled out the given information. And from the perpendicular segments, we get one right angle. The first right angle that I'm going to mention is that angle ADF is a right angle. Because if two segments are perpendicular, then they form a right angle. And then I'm going to write out that angle BEC is also a right angle for the same reason. In step five, let's go ahead and write down our next given, that EF is congruent to segment DC. However, those are not full legs of the triangle. Those are only parts of the legs. So what we have to do is add on that same segment ED to each of the 
segments that we have already that are congruent to get larger segments congruent, which gives us the full legs. So segment FD and segment EC are congruent because of the addition property. And that gives us legs of the right triangles. So we can put an L next to that. And then last but not least, they give us that segment BC is congruent to segment AF. And we had already mentioned that that's the hypotenuse. So those are the hypotenuses of the right triangles. So at this point, we mentioned the right angles. And we have a pair of congruent hypotenuses as well as a pair of congruent corresponding legs. So we can say the two triangles are congruent by HL. And let's list the steps in which we mentioned the right angles. We mentioned a right angle in step three. We mentioned a right angle in step four. We mentioned the congruent hypotenuses and legs in steps six and seven. Moving on to example two. In example two, we have a circle that we're working with. So we're given circle P, and we also have some perpendicular segments. In the end, we want to prove that segment MN is congruent to segment ON. Okay, so chances are we'll have to prove some triangles congruent and then use CPCTC. First of all, we should be thinking from the circle, we should get some congruent radii, which we're looking for in the diagram, and then from the perpendicular segments, we get right angles. So we have to mark our diagram with tick marks. So since we wrote down circle P is the first given, we can write down the congruent radii. OP is congruent to segment MP because all radii in a circle are congruent. And then let's go ahead and write in our next given. So we know that segment PM is perpendicular to segment MN. We know that because it's given, and then we wrote down our next one as well. And from those perpendicular segments, we end up getting right angles. So we have to mention those right angles. So we know that angle PMN is a right angle. And let's go ahead and write Y, which is if two segments are perpendicular, then they form a right angle. And then we have another right angle, angle PON is a right angle, and that's the same reason as 5. Now, since we want to prove those two segments congruent, we have to prove triangles congruent. And so we have to create two triangles. Now, you could have done this earlier in the proof as well. It doesn't matter when, but so long as you mention it somewhere, that's what I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you to say that you drew in segment PN because two points determine a segment. And then since those two triangles share that side, what we can do is use the reflexive property on PN and say that it's congruent to itself. In doing so, we end up getting the hypotenuses of those right triangles congruent. So those are the hypotenuses. And then if we look back up in the proof, those radii that we mentioned in step two are the congruent legs. And then in steps five and six, we mentioned that we have right angles. So that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent. Note, while using HL, you do not have to say that the right angles are congruent in your proof. You just have to say that you have them. Now, if you were to be to be using side angle side, if the angle was included between the two congruent sides, you would then have to mention that the angles are congruent. But if you're using HL, you do not have to mention that the right angles are congruent. All right. At this point, we can then take it to our next step and say that those two segments, NN and NO, are congruent by CPCTC.